Okay, let's start. Uh, so, my name is Andre, and I'm going to talk today about some bots. Uh, first of all, who am I? Uh, I'm a developer most of, most of my time. I'm a Groovy developer, of course. That's why I'm on a Groovy conference. And uh, in, my, in my free time, I'm also co-organizing a community, which is, you, you may see that lot of there. I will talk more about that. Uh, in, in, in a second, but that's where I also apply a lot of my programming skills, if I can. Uh, so let's start. Uh, first of all, let me tell you which community it is. Uh, and uh, it's called Latcraft. It's Latvian software cross-machine cross community. And uh, Latvia is, uh, is not that far away, just one, one, half, one half hour's flight uh, from Copenhagen. Uh, we of course, we talk about software, we talk about different topics about IT and beyond IT. Uh, we actually do uh, meetups every month uh, since December 2014, and we are pretty consistent in that, so we do every month, so we're not skipping any, 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 any dates. Uh, we have qu quite a good crowd there. Uh, I think uh, now it's even, even more than, one, uh, more than 1,200 people in, in, in our mailing list, and it's pretty much uh, for every every meeting we have roughly uh, 100 people joining the event. Uh, this is our team. This is the team behind uh, behind our community that helps uh, and organizes the events, for, uh, thro throws in ideas, and uh, uh, helps with, with everything. And uh, of course. Uh, well, uh, and we, we, we try to be as passionate as possible about organizing events, and we're trying to, be, to, to, to put all, all, all our experience and uh, uh, con uh, connections into organizing that. So, so far, we organized 25 events uh, in, in, in our hometown in Riga, uh, and we're proud of that, and of course, we get, we're going to continue. Uh, and we use different venues, we use uh, the, the different sponsors uh, and different topics, uh, but it's uh, all uh, different types of uh, events like workshops and meet, n normal meetups and uh, sometimes we'd also do, uh, do panel discussions where you, you, you invite people from, from different uh, companies to talk about specific topic. For example, this one was a cloud uh, infrastructure topic discussion. Uh, so we do it pretty consistently and we, and we both think we, we, it's, well, it's, it's, it's a cool community because well, we love it. Uh, and of course, uh, for any community, uh, events, and for actually for any kind of events, you, you have to put an effort into event organization and event, event preparation. You have to invite people, you have to advertise on social media, you have to organize the, 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 the rooms and everything, and that's of course, that's what we do as well, and that's I guess what uh, great comp guys are doing as well, and uh, uh, Java grouping guys are doing as well, so it's, it's kind of a common thing that is, uh, people are doing, and of course there are many uh, services that are available uh, for free. And we're not a rich community, of course, we depend on the sponsors uh, to give us some money. And of course, we, we try to use services that are available there, and many of them. Uh, and this is pre pretty much our uh, tool set. That, of course, I guess it's very similar with, with, with other communities. So we use Trello for task planning, we use Eventbrite for publishing the event and organizing the ticketing system. SendGrid for sending invitations, Slack for internal chatting, Twitter for uh, and Facebook uh, and uh, Telegram and Lanier for publishing information about the event, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, GitHub, for, well, actually uh, all, 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 all the code that we use for uh, uh, automating, all, we'll also put it on GitHub, also use GitHub pages for you know, publishing the website, so it's pretty standard stack, I would say, for uh, non-profits uh, for communities uh, to use publicly available free services, uh, but still, uh, despite of them being free, uh, and actually also because they're free, not, not, not everything there is automated, not everything there is uh, easy to use, so we have to do some automation on top of that. Uh, the first thing we did uh, before we have had an, an, uh, an anything around, uh, if the first thing we did, we did a dashboard for, 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 for the event. Uh, and uh, it looks like that. It shows uh, the sponsors, the, the schedule, the, the timing, the uh, tweeting history and uh, tweeting activity in general. Uh, and it is based on dashing. It's, it's a Ruby-based framework. Uh, I, actually, I haven't found anything better uh, than dashing so far, even though dashing at this point is kind of... Uh, is it, well, it's not kind of, it is deprecated. Uh, it, it was originally created by a company called Shopify. I guess most of you know what it is. Uh, and it's a pretty decent framework uh, allowing you to combine data, uh, 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 data queries with uh, uh, 
with data display, uh, and you use CoffeeScript, and you use HTML, and, you, and, uh, uh, and of course you have to implement the, the background data queries with Ruby, uh, uh, but altogether the framework looks very nice because you're using web WebSockets as a, as, as, as a uh, communication mechanism between the HTML dashboard and background services, so it's quite, quite nice. And uh, we have implemented that uh, for our event, and then we also, inside our city, we implemented that for some other events that happened uh, during the period of last couple of years. It was the, there was uh, AWS Day that we did once, there was a, there was a conference that we organized also uh, in Riga in December, which is called Defternity. Uh, we also do dashboards for that, and there was another conference that was recently done like in, 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 the, in the middle of May called Riga Dev Days. We also used the same uh, dashboarding software and the same principles to, to make the, the, the event. And that's, that's, that's kind of a nice addition to, to the event, but it's not, it's not the bot yet. Uh, another thing we do with the, with, the, uh, with the event, of course, we try to collect feedback from our, from our audience about how they liked the event, how they liked the particular speaker, like the particular session. And uh, I, Initially, we tried to do it with you know, feedback forms and maybe some, uh, put some ruffle on, on, on top of the feedback forms so people actually submit something. Uh, but honestly, the, feedback, the, the response time, the, the response uh, uh, size of, of uh, the, the response percent was very low, like 10, 15, maybe 20 percent of people were responding to feedback forms were sent after, after the event. So uh, what we decided is that maybe it's actually better to collect maybe less verbose feedback, but more, uh, but, but, but uh, bigger amount of feedback. So we decided to assemble these kind of simple devices, uh, which are Raspberry Pi based, and there's like three buttons on them. Well, actually, we, we see four buttons on them, but that's because the shield was like that. Uh, and we, we, I, I, I removed the, 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 the blue button during the, the event, and basically people had, well, after the leaving the room, uh, going to the coffee break, they were pressing either green or red or yellow, uh, depending on how, how they like the session. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, the number of button presses, it's, it's easy for, for, from, from, from user experience perspective, uh, the number of button presses was much bigger than the number of uh, feedbacks we got through normal uh, forms. Uh, also, we did something like that because in, 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 one of, in, in one of our venues, we had this big monitor, which actually was a touch screen. Uh, and we just implemented a simple application that was collecting feedback. So people were kind of could come in and touch the, the, the one that they, that they liked. Uh, uh, and it's, it's, it's still, still working, it's still there, but uh, this, this monitor is not, is not ours, so we couldn't really rely on that. But this is how it looks. And pretty much anybody who has a web interface on or tablet device can open up this uh, uh, URL and uh, Give it, you know, show it to the uh, to, to the audience and hold it be, 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 at, at the place where audience is coming out of the, of, of the room, and they can press one button and another button, and, and um, after you, the voting session is ended, uh, you can go and see the statistics of uh, of uh, how people voted, and you can you know make make a screenshot and. Uh, uh, save it, and of course it's, 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 all, it's also open source. It's also available on GitHub if if, if you need to, if you want to use it. Uh, but also for for uh, we, we kind of like the idea of this button devices because uh, it's really the amount of data you collect is much bigger. Maybe it's the verbosity is not that big, but the, the amount is really big because it will represent much better the, the situation behind the, the people liking or not liking the event. So we decided to be make, make some bigger buttons, and this is the device we did. Uh, we, we initially used it on our conference in, the in Riga, but we also now use it uh, for our meetups as well. Because if you, if you turn this device uh, the other side, instead of Defternity, it will be written Rollatcraft, so we can kind of double purpose device. And it works quite well. It works, it works quite well at that point. Uh, but let's let's uh, uh, dive into you know the, the actual bots uh, because uh, uh, still the, the the dashboard and the, the feedback collection device uh, they they were just you know uh, nice nice additions but they were not automating any, a lot about the event preparation because that's what actually requires the the biggest effort and uh, the, the the biggest problem for us was that we had to copy different uh, the, the the same content over different. Uh, social networks or different uh, uh, event publication sites, which was not error prone. And uh, despite of uh, all, all the effort, we, we try to be very careful doing that, still people were making mistakes. Of course, we have to automate that. You have to automate that. So we created this small utility called CraftBot, which, of course, initially we used some, 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 some scripts uh, that, we, that, did, that did the same things, but then, then we kind of united it all and put it in, 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 into, into one deployment. So this is, yeah, this is. 
the icon of that, the, the logo of that craftbot. So the main tasks that uh, Craftbot had, and still, well, still has, still, uh, Craftbot has, is that uh, we need to publish the event on Eventbrite, on website, uh, on uh, SendGrid, uh, and then we also want to generate uh, event cards, with, uh, which, will, uh, basic, which are basically the images that we're going to publish later on, on Twitter, on Facebook, on, uh, uh, on Lanyard, and uh, some other uh, uh, social media in the end. Uh, and uh, yeah, also it was a way to query the integration services. Uh, because be before Craftbot, people uh, who were, because we're trying to you know, do it in shifts, uh, we have an event lead who is actually doing this publication uh, with, for every event. And uh, basically, for uh, every time event lead needs to publish something, has to need to open 10 windows and go from one to, uh, to, to 10, 10 browser tabs and go, go from one tab to another to uh, do something about it. Uh, and it was not really you know, efficient. So the Crowdwork was, was uh, created to actually solve this kind of uh, problem. Uh, so yeah, th this is an example of event card that we generate uh, behind the scenes. And this is something we eventually share on Twitter and on Facebook to uh, invite people to the event. Yeah, this event was like in, in March, uh, about machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, so before I dive into how all these components work together for the Craftbot, I, I, uh, I would like to show you what uh, what kind of repositories we we, uh, we use, how the data, how the code is structured. So basically, we have three three repositories, and the main repository actually is the website, uh, where which is automatically published by GitHub to the GitHub pages, and it's uh, automatically is available on the lotcraft.lv uh, DNS. And uh, we decided that that website, because it already has the data about what, what is the next event, what, what is the set of previous events, it has this data, events JSON file, which, which is the master data. And we decided we don't want to you know, populate, uh, create more master data, we don't want to create copies of master data. So we, we decided that events JSON will be the only place where we store the event data. And if we need to update the event data, we will do a commit and push to that repository, and automatically the site will be rebuilt automatically in, in, in that case. And uh, the Craftbot code itself is stored in, in, in a separate repository because it's, uh, it's a separate service. Uh, and another thing, of course, because we need to integrate so many services, like Eventbrite and uh, Twitter, and uh, of course they are, they are password protected uh, or, or API key protected, uh, we needed to keep the, uh, the secrets somewhere. Uh, and we didn't want you know, to keep them so on someone's computer, we actually wanted still to have the common share uh, somewhere. And we, yeah, we actually put them on GitHub. Uh, there is a pass source repository. Uh, the thing is that that repository is encrypted. And there's a nice tool called uh, transcri Transcript for, for Git, which allows seamlessly uh, uh, use files on, on the local machine when you check out the, the files. And uh, when you push the files back, uh, when you do to push your commits back to, 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 the, to the GitHub server, actually increase them on, on the fly. So it's a special Git hook for the local repository, uh, which allows you, people who use the, 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 the repository uh, l l work with plain files, but uh, n nobody else will see the file, will, uh, will see the plain, plain text of those files. They will only see the encrypted content. And I can, well, if you want, I can actually show you uh, that. <coughs> Lotcraft uh, password. So, yeah, as you see, we have several JSON files there for, for different services that we used or tried to use. And uh, if, if I open the file, it's actually just an encrypted form. And of course, uh, the, 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 uh, each person in the team knows the master password to decrypt that, to configure the, 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 the hook. Uh, but nobody else. So it's, it's, it's kind of secure. It's kind of uh, very secure because using the, 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 the secure encryption algorithm. Uh, and the tool that we used for that is called Transcript. Transcript. So if you really need to encrypt some data in, in, in your file, in, in your files, keep some secrets like passwords and integration uh, tokens, uh, this is a very handy uh, thing. And I'm actually using also for, for some of my clients. Uh, so it's not only for public data; it's also for for real uh, customer data it can be used. Uh, okay. So yeah, this is the basic setup of of, of uh, where 
the, the, the data is in GitHub, the code is in GitHub, and the secrets are uh, in, 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 in GitHub. So we don't use any, and, 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 and we only use public services here. Uh, then, of course, in order to deploy something, we need to, we need some kind of infrastructure. We need, and, uh, and then, uh, the, for, for that purpose, we, use, we used Amazon. Uh, and of course, you know that Amazon is not free, and I will get back to that. Uh, but uh, let's uh, let's see uh, how, uh, how how the whole, whole how these components are set up together. So, Craftbot is basically or is a set of lambda functions, AWS lambda functions, uh, that uh, perform certain tasks. So, for example, event write publication or sendgrid campaign sending or publishing data, publishing images to uh, S3, uh, and uh, uh, each lambda function is basically relying on the on the data source uh, on, on on the Lotcraft website where we have events JSON. So it's get, fetching data from there, and if needed, it's updating the data in, in there as well. Uh, and uh, the, the way the lambda functions work, you have to put the code the the, the code of the lambda function somewhere, and it's uh, rely it's, it, it, it is it, it resides on S3. Uh, and also because we uh, we still kind of have had to provide somehow the the secret information to to the integration functions, uh, we use uh, Amazon uh, KMS uh, Key Management uh, Service, uh, which allows us to put an encrypted uh, sec uh, secret file on S3, and then when uh, Lambda function starts and it needs let's say uh, a password to Eventbrite, uh, it uh, fetches the file and decrypts that using using KMS. So it's 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 uh, the security flow is very integrated into into what how, how Amazon works, uh, and basically n nobody except the the one who, who um, uh, y you can only decrypt that using Amazon services. But for that you need to have access to the Amazon account. Uh, and nobody else can do that. Uh, and uh, as as a logging uh, system. Yeah, uh, if, if something happens within the Lambda function execution, we send a, a message or a log message or an error message or just information message to the special channel on our Slack, uh, which is called Craftbot, uh, so we can monitor or, or verify that something is happening. And because uh, because uh, we also need to, we, we wanted to have our, our Slack channel as as a uh, control uh, mechanism for 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 the for the bot, uh, we, the only way to call it. Is through uh, through REST API, through HTTP API, through HTTP endpoint, uh, and for that pur purpose, you need, you, we need to define a, uh, we, we need to use Amazon uh, API gateway, so that we have a, a way to call uh, Lambda functions uh, for, for, uh, through Slack infrastructure. Okay. So uh, the flow of, of, of how and the thing is, it's also everything is deployed pretty much automatically. So we don't need to, uh, you know, fire up uh, complex uh, uh, deployment scripts. And most of the things are happening automatically. So mainly, uh, thing, uh, thanks to uh, Travis, uh, which is very well integrated with uh, uh, with GitHub. So websites, of course, published with with, uh, with with Travis. So we just on, on every push to, to website repository, we will have a, a new publication on the website, uh, and it does some some pre calculations there for for, for event data. Uh, the event manager, the the the, the Craftbot uh, code, is also uh, is also uh, published by by Travis, and uh, again, Travis is well, very well integrated with. Uh, with Amazon, and uh, also in Travis, you can well, in, in Travis, you can actually in, integrate with anything. But uh, it, it also has very, very good uh, secret management support. So you can encrypt certain API keys and uh, uh, passwords in, inside Travis YAML. I also push it to, to, to GitHub. And in case of, in case of uh, uh, if there is a change inside inside event manager inside event manager code inside uh, Craftbot code, uh, then Travis will. Build it up, create a zip file, and uh, using the key that is encrypted inside the Travis YAML, uh, push it to to the actual uh, uh, to, to Amazon infrastructure to S3, and then then update the Lambda code. Uh, the, the 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 only thing that is done manually is that uh, the, the the push of the secret files is actually done manually, but that that those, that file doesn't change that often, and the whole infrastructure uh, for for Creating the, the buckets, the, the API gateway, the, the 
lambda functions, uh, the, the first situation of lambda functions and the, the, the KMS key is, ma is managed by Terraform. So we have a Terraform file which describes the whole, uh, the whole set of resources we need to support that. Okay. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's how CraftBot looks, looks in action. So uh, uh, it's, uh, we, we set it up as, 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 a, as a special Slack command. So this is the Slack window. Uh, and uh, craftbot reacts to slash craftbot, and then we can type some subcommands in that. So we can try craftbot help, and then we'll get a list of currently supported commands. And of course, th th this is currently what is implemented, but we're going we're gonna to extend it later on. Uh, so we, we, uh, we can basically copy contacts, and this is what the first thing we do. We copy contacts from Eventbrite to, uh, uh, to, uh, to SendGrid, so we can send the campaign later to, 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 to everyone who, who, who is interested in the, in the, in the new event. Uh, we do the publication of cards, which basically generates a, uh, generates the uh, PNG file for for, for, for different uh, card templates that we need, and push, uh, publishes them on S3, so we can later on take take them from there and publish them on social media. And then we also do pub we can do publish the Eventbrite, which is uh, well, when we start uh, registration. Basically, we do that. Uh, publishing on SendGrid will create a campaign, uh, but will not send it yet. And then the last command that is not listed here, but uh, which is kind of the, the most, uh, uh, that brings the most uh, like uh, registrations is called send, send campaign, after, after which basically there's no, no way back. We, and then at that point, the event is actually published, and then the people are starting registrations. Uh, this is how, and as you see, uh, yeah, our craftbot kind of likes us very much. And he, he's, we, 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 we are the masters of him, uh, and we kind of did, did that for, for, for most of his uh, uh, command messages. Uh, uh, in, in this case, he's just uh, because uh, actually the craftbot itself, the, 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 main, the main process of craftbot is, is is a simple router. So eventually, we'll, 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 at the point when you fire up a command and send it to to, to, to craftbot, uh, it will. Uh, detect what, what kind of type of, of command it is, and then internally will invoke the lambda function that is mapped to this command. So it's kind of asynchronous. So we, we, and, 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 and that's why uh, the, first thing we, the first thing we get when we uh, send a command to Craftbot is that he, tries to, he replies immediately with uh, something like, please be patient, because uh, I, I started. So I, it, it acknowledges that he, starts, he started the, the lambda function, and after, after a while, uh, when, when, when the invocation has, has been completed, uh, the, the, that lambda function will also send back uh, uh, some message to, uh, to the channel. So we see that it's completed, but we'll use the same uh, uh, craftbot uh, icon. So it looks like the craftbot is actually communicating with us. So it could be something like that. So we, we, we ask uh, craftbot to list all the venues that we've been in, in, into in, uh, uh, during our events. And because uh, this venue ID is quite important, well, when you register a new event, you have to specify venue ID inside Eventbrite, and we need we need to know those venue IDs. Otherwise, it's uh, hard. Uh, uh, otherwise, Eventbrite will not allow to create us events. And also, you see, in some cases, there's uh, event under the same ID, but different uh, under the same name, but different IDs. That's because Eventbrite doesn't really filter out if you. And it's it's not obvious inside even by interface if you want to create new new venue or it was old venue, so uh, it could be, uh, some, some duplication can can appear there. So we use this information to publish a new event inside the website first, and then it uses the ID to publish it in the event bright. Uh, and uh, these two things, you see, it's it's, it's roughly uh, one minute between uh, the acknowledgement of the event and. Uh, actual execution of the event, because actually behind the scenes inside the Lambda function it makes a call to Eventbrite, gets the data, parses it, and then sends information back to Slack. Uh, and also, uh, uh, this is a you know, simple conversation of how to publish a card. So I, I tell Craftbot, first of all I see what kind of cards are there. Uh, available, uh, what kind of card, card templates, and then I, I ask Craftbot to please publish these card types to uh, uh, to S3, and uh, the thing is that we, uh, because we pretty much have only one event in in, in the pipeline, we don't have uh, uh, like we don't plan for uh, event like that will happen in in, uh, in two months or three months. We only plan for the event that can happen next month, uh, and uh, that, that's why the, the commands are pretty simple because we we, we know it's going to be the next event, and uh, the, the, the 
that's what Craftbot in uh, the, the Lambda functions that are, that are uh, supporting Craftbot. They, they uh, uh, go to the events JSON and uh, try to find ne the next future event, and they work in the context of that event. So basically, we'll take the data from events JSON for the next uh, for the next event, and we'll uh, get the template uh, as SVG template and generate PNG out of that. And this is the most critical one, like uh, Crowdbot send campaign, uh, which will uh, actually s initiate the campaign sending on SendGrid. After that, there is no way back. After that, uh, basically, event is, 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 is published and there's, uh, everything is done. Uh, the good thing about uh, using this kind of utility, of, of course, we could you know, execute that from our, from our laptops and uh, using some scripts. But the good thing about this is that uh, we, we, we have the whole log of how event was published in, uh, in, in our Slack channel. So people who were, were like, taking the role of the event lead know exactly what happened and uh, uh, they, they know pretty much what should they execute next time because uh, they see what other people do before. Uh, and uh, yeah, this, this serves a purpose because uh, at some, at some, uh, so some, maybe a year and a half ago, uh, because people were shifting, uh, people were making mistakes because they forgot to do something or did something in the, in the way that it was not supposed to do. Now we kind of ma made a process automated and we, uh, we still have manual uh, review, let's say, of, of event cards of, um, of uh, the email template we're going to send. So there still should be a human intervention, but, but most of the uh, things are just uh, are very automated in that sense. Yeah, and if you say something that uh, Craftbot should, doesn't understand, you get yeah, polite replies back. Please make me smarter. Uh, okay, so, uh, so, so some more details about, about, uh, about the implementation. So basically, yeah, we needed, uh, we needed uh, uh, um, Amazon, and we pretty much used these resources to, uh, to configure that. So it was, initially we thought, oh, serverless, Lambda, it's, it's all cool, let's use that. Uh, and uh, the first Lambda function when, 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 when we wrote that was pretty pretty simple, was working fine, and was like you know just one API request. But, but when we considered all, all, all the moving parts that, that, that should be involved, uh, actually it didn't turn out to be that simple. Uh, so we needed Lambda functions, we needed uh, uh, something that actually was quite painful, is, is a set of uh, role uh, policies and, and permissions that, that were needed for uh, configuring all, 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 all the, the interactions between, between different services, API gateway endpoints, S3 storages, K, KMS encryption, uh, all of that, well, Amazon provides that, but it's not you know, super developer friendly, I would say. Uh, so uh, the thing that we have to use, actually, we have to use, we have to, we have to use Terraform uh, to describe all, all the resources that were needed for, uh, 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 for running all this infrastructure inside, inside Amazon. And uh, as you see, uh, I have like, 10, 10 different files for, uh, for, for Terraform. And I'll probably enter the presentation mode. So of course, we, we needed a special user for and special policy for executing the Lambda function so, and to, to, to apply to, to a Lambda function. Uh, another thing we needed is, uh, of course, we needed some buckets to, to where we actually keep the code and where we eventually publish the images uh, so we can access them later on. So all, all of this is described uh, with, with Terraform. And for, the, for those who don't know, Terraform is, is, is basically a, is a kind of API aggregator uh, which can create, create and manage resources in, in different cloud providers. Uh, and it uses this uh, more or less, I, I guess it's quite simple language, uh, describing what, what, what different types of resources we need to create in the cloud. And it supports Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, some DNS uh, providers, and, and so, so on and so forth. So it's pretty handy. Uh, and what initially looked like a very simple thing uh, turned out to be quite complex, especially on the API gateway level. So uh, yeah, uh, this, is, this is how the Lambda definition looks like. And as you see, we have quite many details you have to specify for, the, uh, 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 for, for, for that to be created. So the, 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 the important thing is that the event manager zip, and uh, because we, we decided that we, we would like to keep one package, so event manager zip was one package with all the Lambda functions inside, uh, and then we just published se several Lambda functions based on the same zip. Uh, that, that's why we, this event manager zip will be repeated for, for, throughout all, all, all the functions. And then the function name, function description, the role, 
which gives which describes what the slum the function is allowed to access, what kind of different resources like S3, uh, KMS, and, 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 and other stuff. And then we have to define what kind of method is, should be called, or what class and method that should be called inside the, the, this, uh, the, the code base, the event manager zip. And then, of course, there's Java 8. And as you may guess, actually, all the whole co all, all code of event manager actually is written in Groovy. Uh, uh, and with the different integration tasks. Uh, also, as it turned out, for some of the font-related things, we had to use uh, special variables because when you execute code inside Lambda, it's not the same as, as when you execute the code inside uh, your computer. Uh, because most likely, when you execute on your desktop or laptop, you have uh, the fonts are available there. The fonts are in default path. You have uh, some libraries that you don't know that they're there, but they're, they're, they're there. And the, when you do the same thing in, inside Lambda function, you realize that it's, yeah, it's kind of a Linux machine, but most likely it's kind of a sort of container, uh, but it lacks certain things like you know, default fonts like Arial. Uh, there's no, there's no, 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 no fonts there, pretty much. It's like some, one font, I think, which is very, very uh, ugly, and uh, uh, we, don't, we didn't want to use that. So we need to override that thing. We have to, and debugging Lambdas is not super easy. I would say, but eventually, yeah, we made that because we already invested some time uh, before that. Uh, so we made it work. And as you see also here, uh, for, for each Lambda function, yeah, we have like Lambda, uh, AVS Lambda function, AVS Lambda uh, alias, which describes whether it's like the version number of, of the Lambda function. So we can deploy several functions, but we didn't use that. We just deployed the, all, all, always the latest. And basically for each function that we needed, we had to describe this kind of code block. And of course, I eventually en ended up generating all that stuff using, using some, some Gradle task, because writing that thing for every uh, simple method I want to execute was kind of too, too much. Uh, and another thing that was very hard to, you know, to get right, uh, especially uh, uh, the problem with, with Amazon is that uh, by default, uh, it doesn't uh, save the logs of, of the Lambda function. Uh, and you have to give Lambda function the rights to write logs inside Amazon. And before that, you will not be able to debug anything. You will not see anything, any output from Lambda. And that was pretty annoying. Uh, of course, after I figure out that I need to add this kind of policy, and this is quite a big policy, I would say, uh, to each Lambda function, then it worked. But going there was, was, was a bit, was a bit uh, problematic. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, Calling Lambda functions uh, from, from using Amazon API uh, is possible, uh, and we can do that. But we, di we didn't we didn't need that. We actually we wanted to call it from 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 Slack from from Slack uh, provided infrastructure, and it needed the, the API uh, endpoints, uh, REST API endpoints, and. Uh, basically, uh, the, the the most complex component that. Uh, you, you, you could find in, uh, in, uh, in Amazon, uh, I would say it's API Gateway. It, from, from what you read on their, uh, on, on their website, you probably think it's something that should simplify your life. Uh, well, maybe, um, maybe later, but no, no, not today. Uh, because uh, for, each, uh, for each method, for, for, for each API uh, endpoint, we have to create at least seven resources, I think. So it's the Lambda permission, the API gateway resource, the API gateway method, API gateway integration. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and also we needed this uh, sp special conversion for, 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 the, for the router because Amazon um, uh, doesn't support uh, uh, processing HTML post data. It also only supports processing of JSON data. So we needed to write, to write the specific transformation to actually do a transformation from HTML post to a JSON that can be later on sent to Lambda, uh, which was again uh, something that I spent a couple of hours on. Um, yeah, I found this on some Amazon blog post uh, somewhere, and it, and it worked. But I mean, the, the the path there was kind of painful. And so, for, for each method, there should be a response, uh, uh, gateway response, gateway integration response, uh, and uh, well, qu qu quite many things. Oh, I'm actually looking at the long, wrong file. I would like to show you. Uh, this one, API methods. Yeah, this is the longest file. It is like 600 lines. And we have, I think we have like eight or nine methods in, in, in the API. And for each of them, we have, uh, yeah, permission, resource, method, integration, uh, method response, in, uh, and method response, integration response. So, uh, 
yeah, and the, the, one of them is uh, response to the error, another one is response to the to 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 to, uh, to the norm, no, no, normal successful response. And of course, this one eventually generated, but but getting uh, all the resources that we need was not was not super easy. But now now it works. Now we have a template. Now now we can uh, now we can add more functions on top of that. Uh, but uh, Experience overall was kind of not, not as, as, as expected because we thought of oh, serverless we mean, should mean that we actually do not do any management uh, of servers, but yeah, we don't do any management of servers, but then we do management of all the other resources that are involved. And the number of resources actually is much bigger. It's probably sometimes, it's, sometimes it's easier for, you know, just to uh, have a server because uh, it's not that uh, hard to manage. So uh, the pitfalls that we had with, with you know, Using Amazon Lambda is that uh, the policy configuration could be quite quite problematic sometimes. Of course, you will eventually get it, but uh, it's not obvious. Uh, and Amazon has some some helper functions now, like uh, Amazon Policy Editor, Policy Wizard. Uh, they're good, but they're not not helping if you don't know what you actually would like to achieve. Uh, another thing that will turn out be problematic because. Uh, uh, when you run code inside Amazon Lambda, uh, it's running inside the UTC time zone. And of course, when you publish events that are based on dates, uh, then you have to be in the, in the, in the time zone of the event. And that was, we, we had a couple of bugs there, which uh, resulted in, in, in the wrong message being sent. Uh, so yeah, we had to specify the time zone explicitly to be Riga time zone uh, in, in all the code, because otherwise it's very risky to uh, send something that is not in, in, in the right time. Uh, font configuration, as I mentioned already, was, was, was problematic inside Lambda. Uh, and also another thing that, uh, because Lambda is, uh, is not standing there forever uh, for you and waiting while you, you send something, uh, it basically if you send the, the first request after a long period of time of, not, no, 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 of, no, of no activity, uh, Lambda will take some time to warm up. So the first request to, to the Lambda function will be like, uh, maybe, maybe, it could be like, a minute or two sometimes, and especially because it's Java, uh, the, the start time is, is, is longer than for other runtimes. Uh, so, uh, and for example, if I now try to send some commands to Craftbot in Slack, uh, I will get a timeout. Uh, and after I send it a second or third time, that, that actually will warm up and then, then, then that will be faster. Uh, and, and, and another problem is that uh, the timeout that you put in the Lambda uh, function is like five minutes. So if you Execute lambda function asynchronously. That that well, that doesn't matter. Uh, but if you if you want to uh, accept the, the get the response from lambda, then uh, and if you if you're calling that through a API gateway, API gateway has the maximum uh, timeout of uh, 30 seconds. Uh, and then if you send uh, a command from uh, Slack, so basically, despite of what you do, uh, the uh, and uh, for some, for some, uh, for, for Java, for especially for for, for 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 the background task that which we were publishing stuff, it was totally fine. But for the for the actual router uh, that was routing the commands to Lambda functions, uh, that we should we should have considered writing it in some, not in Java because time to start up time is quite quite big. And at, the, at this point, it's still in Java. It was still in Groovy, actually. Uh, but we can, so we, we're thinking of writing it to, to either Python or, 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 or JavaScript, the, the, the routing part. But the, 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 the other functions will still be in Groovy. So as you know, Mike, the, the Amazon is not, is not free. Amazon services are not free. Uh, and you have to pay for them. Uh, the thing is that Lambda uh, uh, functions, uh, you have roughly 1 million seconds a month of Lambda function execution for free. That's why we actually started all this path. Uh, that's why we uh, started going through all, 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 all this problem with set, setting up Lambda functions and the uh, API gateway. And uh, that's what I pretty much get on, on, on every my uh, invoice from Amazon. I don't spend money on, on, on Lambda functions. I spend a little bit on S3, but it's, well, I'm also using that account for some other stuff. And I'm, I'm also spending a bit on K, K, KMS, that uh, key management service because I pay like one one dollar per, per per key per month. That's that's but that's it. That's no, no, nothing else is involved. All the rest is free. All, all the services that are involved are free. Uh, okay. Uh, there's another bot that we use actually, uh, uh, and it's called 
Pitchkin. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I guess most of you don't know who is Pitchkin, uh, but people from 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 uh, former Soviet Union uh, actually know that guy. It's it's a uh, it's a cartoon character, uh, which is basically a postman, uh, and. Uh, the idea behind Postman, uh, behind Pitchkin, was that we wanted to collect some some links uh, for our that we want to share with our community uh, through our social media, uh, and uh, yeah, we decided to to, to create one. Uh, and the the idea is that we collect the links through Slack again, so people are just sending links to to to, to Pitchkin, like from our own channel, uh, sending a link to 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 Pitchkin. He's collecting them, storing them in a database, and then periodically we publish those links and share them with with with, our, with, with the through through the channels. Uh, so uh, we kind of had experience with with Amazon, and uh, we wanted something. Just I, I actually, Pitchkin started just just as an experiment, uh, and uh, it appeared that actually there is a platform called Glitch. Uh, which is very cool because it allows us to deploy uh, bots uh, immediately, and uh, it uses the, the the code from 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 BotKit, uh, uh, and uh, we can code the the bot, the whole bot inside a web browser, and we can deploy it from there. Of, co of course, the 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 the, uh, the uh, platform itself, it's well, it's still free, uh, but. And they, they, they're hosting the, the services, uh, and there's like, actually quite many already available bots that people have community has created, uh, and uh, it's, it's it's quite quite vibrant, a vibrant community as, as as far as I noticed. So it's a very simple way, you know, to within the browser uh, configure your uh, all, all your code you need for 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 for, for, for your bot. And uh, Glitch will host it. Glitch will run it. Of course, they have some, you know, fair, fair use uh, policy, so don't overuse it. But for small communities like like ours, it's uh, actually was it's quite quite uh, quite efficient. So basically, uh, when uh, well, I can show you that. Uh, sorry. Uh. So you, you can just create your own project here. Uh, you have to log in, of course, uh, and uh, then it's on, after some time, after you coded your bot, you can actually deploy that bot, uh, activate that, and then it has integration points with Slack, with Skype, and probably some other uh, some other chatting solutions. Uh, and it, it, it actually works quite well. With some delay sometimes, but but of course it's free infrastructure, so we can't complain. So you, when you enter your project, you actually get the like the the, uh, the editing uh, IDE, like web web IDE for uh, for the code, and this is this is JavaScript code, uh, and is based on the BotKit uh, library, and you can basically code the, the well. Uh, a lot of things that are created here are uh, coming by f coming with the template. So it's not me. It's, uh, I didn't write them. Uh, and uh, you just need to change some of the you know the, the main class. And here that's what, that we have uh, uh, coding code that uh, gets the messages from 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 the Slack channel, saves the data into the Firebase database, and then also also has some methods to. You know, extract the data and send the data later on to to, to some to, to Telegram channel, uh, and and the thing is that uh, you you can code it right here. I, I can write some code here, uh, and it 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 is you see it's deploying that automatically. So, no, oh, sorry, I I broke the code. No, yeah, yeah. So it's quite uh, you know efficient way to test your bot to to to, to write your bot because uh, everything is deployed live. In the same second, pretty much. Quite a fascinating platform. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to, to play more with that. Of course, I'm not controlling how much uh, speed and how much hosting is there, but uh, probably, probably I shouldn't. Okay. And uh, BotKit gives you some predefined commands that you can use. So if you try like uh, Pitchkin help, and in this case you talk. Uh, to, to pitch instead of writing a command, it will give you some some uh, uh, predefined commands that uh, that any bot has, like uptime uh, and uh, some others. And uh, you, you can basically also talk to, to Pechkin and say, say make him say something. So it's 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 a basic functionality that's coming with any bot uh, created from a template. Uh, you can also see the uptime and. Uh, 
thing that we implement, implemented for Pitchkin, we kind of implemented that we wanted to, uh, the link to be collected so that basically anyone who is in the channel can write Pitchkin propose and then the link, and then it's optional to write some description after the link. And uh, Pitchkin will take that link and add it to the Firebase database. Uh, and uh, the, the, then when, we, when, when we, we, we can actually review what, what's inside the database, what, what's inside the queue to be published, and uh, by typing Pitchkin queue, and it will see, show us the latest links that are being in, in, in the queue. And when we, we, say, <coughs> uh, <coughs> when we go and publish those links, then Pitchkin frees up the, the queue and uh, well, basically goes to the next cycle. So we involve the whole team to. Uh, contribute to the links and to the sharing, and uh, eventually all of this is published on, on Telegram at this point. Uh, we plan to uh, expand also to Twitter and on our website, uh, but that's that's next step. So bright future ahead. So yeah, we, we we're gonna do some integration, uh, some more integrations with dashboards. Uh, probably do more the dashboard carousels uh, for Craftsbot. We're gonna implement more automation for. We, it's not fully automated yet. Like we have to automate publishing for Linear and in Facebook and maybe, uh, maybe LinkedIn. Uh, we also want to, to use to fetch some statistics about how many tickets left, how many uh, pe people have uh, re 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 read the email and uh, all that stuff. Uh, and also want to automate Pitchkin more, so we just in, in, use more channels to publish data to, uh, for, for that. Uh, the code for uh, Craftbot for dashboard for voting is, is on GitHub. Pitchkin, unfortunately, I, I can't show you the code because uh, it's uh, it's hosted by, uh, by 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 Glitch. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much all from me. Thank you very much. Oh, if you have any questions, I'm I'm, I'm ready. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Why do you think you go with that instead of using like, um, like a bot service? Because it's, it costs money. Oh. <laughs> that, that, that was the only reasoning, basically. We didn't want to pay uh, up front for, 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 for hosting the server. And we, um, yeah, another, another reason was that we wanted to try Lambda, uh, serverless and Lambdas, and go through this experience, and that was a nice chance to do that. So we did that. Maybe now I, I would actually just pay, you know, five dollars for cloud, <laughs> for a digital cloud, digital ocean server, and cost it there. But yeah, it was a nice experience anyway. Yeah. Uh, I think so, yeah. Well, if, if, if I need some background processing of like smaller tasks, uh, I don't know. Uh, well, if, for example, if I had, let's say, a huge event organization company, I would probably use Lambdas to publish stuff uh, use, uh, in, in, in the same way. In, the, in this scale, we have only one uh, meetup, meet but on, 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 on a bigger scale, it would actually make, still make sense, and we, we're going to scale automatically for, for, for Lambdas. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Any other questions? Okay, oh, thank you. <laughs>